China's vast military is a paradox. It's governed by the Chinese Communist Party's pledge to abide by the rule of law in international relations. At the same time, it's expanding rapidly under what President Xi Jinping calls the Chinese dream to restore China as a great power. Those twin ideals raise questions about its long-term strategic ambitions. The strength of a nation's economy usually dictates how much it spends on its military. In other words, the more money you make, the more you can spend on defence and strategic goals. Economically, China has outpaced most countries in the past 30 years, and that's helped it build one of the most powerful defence forces in the world. It's estimated to have about 2 million active duty troops and 660,000 armed police. Its arsenal includes about 3,200 aircraft, more than 750 naval vessels, 3,500 army tanks and almost 300 nuclear warheads. Then there's the United States, one of our closest allies whose firepower overshadows the rest of the world. They're believed to have almost one and a half million active troops, more than 13,000 aircraft, 490 vessels in the Navy, more than 6,000 tanks and a vast nuclear arsenal. Historically, these nuclear warheads have made the US the most formidable force in the world. Other nations have gradually built their own stockpiles, but the Americans retain the advantage by being able to launch military assets from a huge range of positions in the world with help from their allies. And critically, because it also has more aircraft carriers and missile submarines. The US can launch fighter jets from 11 carriers. China has just two. The Americans can also field an imposing force below the waves with 18 nuclear-powered missiles submarines. There are six Chinese vessels with similar capabilities. These are the disparities that China has been working hard to overcome. We've seen China essentially emerge uh, at the end of the Cold War as a small outdated Soviet era institution and uh, grow its defense budget by 900 uh, percent between 1996 and today. And in the last decade alone, it's doubled um, its defense expenditures. These are the disparities that China has been working hard to overcome. The latest images from China's military shipbuilding yards show it's on track to have four aircraft carriers on the water in the next few years, and a total of six by 2035. And while it still leaves it short of the US, it almost certainly ticks a few boxes on some of its main military goals. Increasingly, uh, they see themselves as, as uh, having uh, the decisive advantage over the United States, at least uh, within our own region, within Asia, within Southeast Asia, if not globally. And that seems to have been um, the a very a deliberate campaign on the part of the Chinese um, and closely paired with their efforts to modernize their military. China is also making big gains in military technology. And unlike most other countries, it's invested heavily in making its military equipment at home. It's now the world's second biggest arms producer. But there are challenges ahead. China still lags in the recruitment, training and retention of a professional fighting force on such a large scale. By 2050, its workforce is expected to decline by 158 million people and its population 20% smaller than that of India. It's also fighting dissent from separatist movements in multiple provinces. And then there are the disputed land borders with countries such as India and North Korea. And what that means for China's interpretation of international law will be critical to understanding how it plans to exercise its power.